Welcome to PCR TV. We are at Euro PCR 2017. My name is Azim Latib. I'm from Milan, Italy. I'm an interventional cardiologist. And I'm really lucky here today to be with two colleagues, um, Oscar Mendes from Argentina and Ziad Ghazal from Lebanon. Um, welcome, Oscar, Ziad. We have a really interesting topic to discuss today. We're going to be talking about how to be successful in left main intervention, what are the right tools, what are the right techniques, and really it does feel to me that this is the year to be talking about left main intervention. 2017 left main intervention has really come to highlight. Oscar, why do you think that is? Now we have better evidence, that's why today we are not only discussing techniques but also the level of indication that may change the guidelines. Maybe you can comment something about the, the technique that is also going to change. So, you know, you're right. I mean, it's 40 years since Grunzig did the first PCI and one of the first lesions he treated was left main. But now we have the Excel study, large randomized study, right, that compares PCI to bypass surgery showing non-inferiority for PCI. And I think a lot of that non-inferiority is because we're using different devices right now, Ziad. You know, we have better stents, better techniques. So what do you think about device choice when thinking of left main intervention? Today, we're moving more aggressively into the left main uh, arena, primarily because we know more how to tackle bifurcations and we have studies like the Excel, for example. And the devices have improved, the technique has improved. And of course, we've had stents that have moved into, from one generation to the second to the third. And of course, it's very important for physicians tackling left main bifurcations, or any bifurcation for that matter, to understand stent technology. Because not all stents are the same. The size of the stent, when you take it from 3.0 to 4.0, when you do your pot technique in the, in the left main, when you want to open a cell, you know, how big can you get a cell? How big can you get a stent without distorting it? So there is knowledge that needs to be accumulated with time. I think you really highlighted something I try and teach my fellows as well. Right? You need to know about the devices, but you also need to think about the strategy and have a well-planned strategy when you want to tackle left main intervention. So Oscar, you know, what's your strategy? When you think of left main intervention, you see a left main lesion. How do you think about what strategy are you going to use for that left main? Well, you know, we have to decide from the very beginning, I think, to use also the complementary techniques like imaging or FFR that sometimes maybe, you know, I'm living in Latin America, we are not using so frequently, but I think for left main is something that we must do it because we can save life. We not only can improve our, uh, I mean, angiographic outcomes, but our clinical outcomes. We have to decide if we are using one or two stents according to the lesions. Uh, we discuss in a session which is going to be the strategy, but it's patient by patient. And you have to be prepared to change during the procedure from one to the other. So we've got to individualize the approach. You know, this whole thing about one stent versus two stents, you know, in the left main, we don't have the answer yet. Um, there is a study right now uh, by the European Bifurcation Club called EBC Main. So it's a study really where patients with left main, true left main bifurcations with large circumflex branches will be randomized either to provisional or to double stenting using a stent such as you know the onyx stent which specifically has large sizes so it'll have you know i think it's powered for a combined endpoint okay and i think that study will help us answer some of these questions about you know one stent versus two stent so oscar you know in the ebc main study it's going to be looking at strategy but also it's interesting that they've chosen a single platform a single stent platform, the Onyx platform, to treat bifurcations. In your opinion, do you think that the stent platform makes a difference for left main bifurcation and left main treatment? And if so, what kind of difference? Yes, for sure, because uh, with previous platforms, sometimes we cannot expand, or if we expand, we can distort. We, we also have some devices that can shorten too much, we can miss the, uh, the lesion, or sometimes the ostium. As I told you before, in some cases I really like to cover the whole left main, but you need to be very precise so you cannot use a device which shortens too much. And also good access to the, to the main branch if you, you, you want to go to the left circle. I don't know which is your opinion, but I think a dedicated device also to prevent 
uh, extend compression or distortion is yeah. important. I, I don't know your opinion. Absolutely, Oscar. So, you know, one of the challenges for me about left main intervention when I teach it to my fellows um, is sizing, right? You know, major it's, it's interesting how often we undersize left main stents. Yeah. You know, in the past, we'd only have 3.54 millimeter stents for which we'd use in a left main, stenting left main to LAD. But we know that, you know, in over 60% of patients, the left main's well above four millimeters. Yeah. So what we do, we take the stent and we post dilate it with a really large balloon, a five millimeter balloon. But when you do that, I think you mentioned you can have two problems. Yeah. You can foreshorten the stent, because the bigger you make it, the, the shorter it becomes. You also change the properties of the stent. So the more it's dilated, yeah. the less integrity it has and possibly the less radial strength. The other factor you mentioned, which I think is really important, which I try and teach my fellows, is that often with left main disease, we need to cover all the way to the ostium. Yes. You know, because often there's disease of the ostium. And so maybe the stent protrudes a little bit towards the ostium or the aorta. And in that case, if you have a stent that's not resistant to the guide catheter, you can actually crush the stent, cause long longitudinal stent deformation. So I think it's really important as we move forward, you know, we think of all second and third generation drug eluting stents as the same, right? Because we think of clinical outcomes and revascularization. But I think there are certain lesion types where we need to think about the structure of the stent, the integrity of the stent, to get a good acute performance, which will hopefully result in long-term better clinical outcomes. But Zia, let me take it back to you. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of young physicians will come to PCR, they'll see us talking about left main intervention, they'll see live cases with left main intervention. You mentioned, you know, start with bifurcations, but once they're ready to move on to left mains, can you give us some tips and tricks for a, a young operator? The, the most important thing is before the procedure, pre-procedural planning and understanding the choices uh, for a particular patient is very important. That's why I really would not recommend doing ad hoc left main stenting. So it's very important, I think, once you do a cardiac catheterization, discover a left main, you have to discuss it with the patient. The hard team approach there becomes important. And then take the patient off the table, plan a strategy, provided the person is experienced in uh, bifurcation stenting. And then, of course, there is the one stent approach and the two stent approach. What kind of possibilities or what kind of strategies can be applied to the one stand versus the two stand. If you want to do two stand from the beginning, if you have two very tight ostia, for example, uh, LAD and CERC, then obviously you may want to think of the crush technique. If you're going to do provisional, then you still have many choices, which is, for example, uh, the, the T, the tap, the culotte, uh, reverse crush. Uh, and it's important to sort of uh, get yourself in a, f a set of mind whereby you say strategically, I want to start with this and then what can I, how, how can I progress? And all this thinking needs to be planned ahead of time because there are surprises along the way when you actually do it. You want to try to minimize the surprises. So have a good strategy, plan your strategy, take your time to look at the angiogram and try and plan every step of the procedure. Oscar, you do a lot of left main intervention. Any final tips and tricks you have for physicians you know, on starting left main intervention, how to do good, good provisional? And I would say that they, they had to, as uh, Ziad told before, to evaluate first the kind of lesion you have to deal with. Maybe if you don't have a severe lesion in the often of the circuit, maybe this is the ideal case for provisional. But maybe if you are doubtful, I would recommend to go for the two stent technique because to have a complication, a subacute thrombosis of one of the two vessels is going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. So I think to have, to have an optimal outcome, angiographic outcome, not only angiographic but also by the IBUS, should, should be mandatory for this uh, kind of situation. So in my opinion, in my personal experience, if you are doubtful about the outcome of provisional, if you are not using e-machine, you have to, to go for two. Okay. Good lesion preparation, but also maybe optimization of the final yes. result. I think if you decide to do two stents, you take on a responsibility as an operator to do a really good job. And to make sure you do a really good job, I think you mentioned something that I think is important, intracoronary imaging. Ziad, do you think it's mandatory in left main? 
I don't think it's compulsory to do uh, imaging, uh, as, uh, and I think it is tied with experience. M okay. Experienced operators sometimes uh, leave it out, but it's important to, uh, you know, to, to, to use the imaging when you think you need it. At the end of the day, you have to have a perfect result. Stent thrombosis in this location could be fatal. So that's why a perfect result is what we look for. So, you know, thank you both uh, for your time and for sharing these few minutes with me to talk about left main intervention. I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, I'm fortunate to be with two really experienced operators. I think hopefully we've shared some of our tips and tricks about device selection, maybe stent choice being important. Also talking about how to approach a left main bifurcation, your strategy, how to get an optimal result, you know, whether you use imaging or not. I think these are all important points for operators who come to PCR and want, are thinking about doing left main intervention in the future. So thank you for watching us on PCR TV and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.